Ebron in the morning. We got Rosenberg on assignment. He's at ESPN Bristol, Connecticut. We got Laura Styles here. And we have Dr. Steve Perry with us right now. Give it up for Dr. Steve Perry. Or just Welcome. Dr. Perry. What do you prefer? It's whatever, man. Because <laughs> I hear Dr. Perry all the time. Dr. Perry's cool. Dr. Dre is, they call him doctor, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Facts, and, facts. Right. I, so, and I respect his doctor because it seems to be worth yeah, a lot yeah. more than mine. Right? <laughs> <laughs> no. I saw you on CNN. Had to be uh, five or six years ago. Uh, covering your school in Hartford, yeah, in Hartford, you got a great Capital, memory, man. Capital Prep. Yeah, you got a great memory. Well, man. I have notes too. Oh, there's always that. <laughs> um, and we're gonna get into your collaboration, or I don't know how to term it. Partnership. With no, it's partnership. A, it's a partnership. Yeah. With uh, with Diddy and, yeah. and Harlem, that's uh, gonna be opening this fall. This well, yeah, in the, yeah, it's absolutely. the first first class. It is. It is. And uh, we'll get into that in a yeah. second. But uh, you being in education and just being active and dealing with young adults, I want to start for the audience, people listening and viewing. Um, education in America is something, and public education, yep. uh, let's be specific, uh, is something that a lot of people have lost faith in. Um, public education here in New York City is damn near an embarrassment. It is. Um and you know, and I'm sure the the similar things for black and brown children and low income children around the country. Every single place that there are black, brown, uh, and poor children, the story is exactly the same. Underfunded. Uh, not underfunded. Not underfunded. Nah. So that's it's not, not a issue. money issue. Oh, it's not the money. In fact, if money were the issue, then we should send every kid to prison because that's where we spend the most amount of money on those kids. Wow. So what is the issue? The issue is under expectations. The lower expectations of the individuals who are working in those schools guide what happens to the children. I mean, this is the data, right? This right. is what the data is very clear. It, it, there was a study out of California that talked about how uh, a faculty member was told that all the children were gifted. So like you were talking, just style, like we were saying, that when you believe that certain children cannot learn, you treat them as such. Mm. It, the reason why we started our first school was not because of some work that I was doing in the quote-unquote hood. It was actually some work that I was doing in the suburbs. A suburb in Connecticut called Windsor, Connecticut. And you should know nothing about that except for the fact that at one point it was named the second wealthiest black uh, suburb in America. And one would think, given that, you should be able to see some level of parity within the school. But I could still find the highest classes by looking for the most amount of white kids in the class, which is bananas. Highest grades, you mean? High, no, highest expectations, highest meaning expectations. the highest, okay. like AP courses. Got it. With, or were with, with disproportionately white. If 60% of the school is minority, then 60% of the classes sh should be uh, um, minority. So that should include the AP classes. But in fact, it wasn't the case. So I was like, this is but this is bananas. Why is this happening? And so I asked people, right, because I don't know. I asked one person, there was this class called extended algebra. Like, what is that? It's three semesters of algebra. Who likes algebra so much that you want to do it another semester? <laughs> what Come to find out, all the kids that I were working with who were black, Latino, and poor— were the ones who were ending up in extended algebra. And I, and I asked them, what test did they fail? And no one could tell me. And I thought, man, we could open a school and be at least as terrible as these cats. Mm. But what if we're right? What if our belief in our children is such that if we put them in a school that's designed the same way as these wealthy white schools are, and it, with the same expectations as these wealthy white schools have, what if we put kids who just grind in those schools, what would happen? Well, 100% of our graduates have gone on four-year colleges since we started in 2005. And that's all just based on expectation. It is. Treating them like we have high expectations of you. Here's what we expect. Day in and day out, we're going to be focused. And if you're here with us, this is how you operate. Right. We designed schools based upon what we saw that worked. You know, you went to a school where uh, they had an extended day, an extended right, year, right. high expectations. Yeah. So what was that, Laura? What well, no, I was talking to him about how I went to a, what you call a track school. So we had track A, B, and C. Track A was um, all the gifted magnet students were there. Uh, track B was all like the ESL students. And the C track was like the neighborhood kids. See, I, I, happen, I was from when the neighborhood. When you say neighborhood kids, what do you mean? 
basically everybody was in gangs and you that's know. where you was in. Yeah. C no, no, no. I was in H. <laughs> I was in H. <laughs> but, but, but all my neighbors and everybody from you know, because I came from that same exact neighborhood, except I, I, you know, I tested well and I was on H. Track. But all my neighbors, and this is where I, I, I saw the difference in the classes and the expectations because I mean, I had a, a completely different, uh, like my teachers were different, the way we were treated were different. The kids in my neighborhood, the teachers didn't care anything about them, whether they came to school or they had different rules. They had, it was just, it and was this is so an open blatant. secret. This is an open secret. So I mean, blatant. everyone knows this. Mm. And when I speak on this and say, you do know that that's wrong, right? Like, you know, you can't do that. You know, aside from it being immoral, it's actually illegal. You mm. can't treat people based upon their zip code differently. In 1954, it was very clear, Brown versus Board of Education, that separate but equal is not equal, and you therefore can't do it. Right. You know, even Dr. King, is, in his final book, Where Do We Go From Here? Community Chaos, in his final chapter, talked about taking kids up out of the hood and putting them in what he called educational parks. Dr. King was talking about that in 1968. Mm. He said, don't wait to integrate the neighborhoods. He said, send them to schools. He, but the, the catchphrase then was integration, because the belief was, if you put a, a kid of color in a school with white people, that would be all you needed to do. Well, we've since learned that that then wasn't they, quite that simple. And really, it ain't that simple because right. then they do some foolishness like ABC tracks, right. and you back where you started. So you have one building with different expectations. All we've done is take the same expectations. I tell you what I did, bro. I went to visit some of these wealthy white um, prep schools. I, I grew up in poverty. My father was in prison by the time I was in going into college. Um, I was born on my 16th birthday. Oh, same narrative. A lot of people, right? So I believed on some level that some people were just born smart. And many of the people who were born smart were white and wealthy. The more money you had, the whiter you were, the mm. smarter you were. I, I grew up believing that. And, and I believe, believe that when I was doing well in school, I was just beating the system. I was just hustling them. Like I was just figured out. I just, you know, cracked the code, right? That's I knew, what I always thought. It really I always thought my, that my success in school was all a hustle. Like, I just had figured out how to move around right. right. Mm -hmm. There was a point at which I would started wearing a tie to class because a professor told me, that's a nice tie. Every day I wore a tie. <laughs> it was... That, yeah, me and you was the same guy. It's a simple. You no. wore a tie too? No, I didn't wear a tie, but I participated in <laughs> right. class and made that? sure I knew the yeah. information so the teacher saw me and simple. saw that I was actively participating in learning. We thought that... That we way, if I missed that a couple right. of assignments... So, but listen, we thought that was a hustle. We thought that was a hustle, but then I went to visit some of these wealthy white um, elite private schools, and you know what? They were teaching them that. It wasn't a hustle. It was actually learning strategies. They would teach And them. these are life strategies. They were the same thing. So the things that I had figured out, not because I was brilliant, but because I was out of options, because where was I going? I, I knew that I couldn't hustle, like the real hustle, because that just wasn't for me. Standing outside in the cold, and right. connect, it just wasn't the answer. <laughs> yeah. Wait for somebody to come up, a pager to come up and be nah. like, yo, no, it just wasn't for me. Yeah, You know, that's not, cold right. is not my color. So are we saying that even the kids who are, who have are more challenged in learning, right? Because everybody has does things well. I mean, some people are better at math. Some people are better at retaining information through reading. Some people are better at retaining through writing, sure. through speaking. Everybody has their way that they retain information to learn. Are we saying that basically everyone is equal if put into equal environments? The, great, the greatest challenge that most of our kids face is self-esteem. Mm. When you know you're nice at something... You walk around like you're nice. Like last night, I was at uh, my son's uh, basketball game. He's not nice at this. Like, he's not. He knows he's not. Facts. It's just, mm -hmm. You say it based on facts. But <laughs> but he skipped a grade. Yeah. Right? You can't have it all. Yeah. So he's tall. He's probably going to be tall for nothing. Yeah. That's all right. That's fine. But he's, you know, what he's good at, he knows he's good at. So we're out there, and you see these little water bug boys running around, dribbling, doing things behind their back. They feel some kind, like they feel good about themselves. Yeah. And, and you can see it. Like, you know, they, they're dressed like they know how to play. Yeah. Right? That confidence comes through. And so they'll jack shots from all over. They're outside in the parking lot shooting yeah. into the gym. Right? They don't care. It's the same thing in the classroom. When your heart has been broken so many times because you don't feel like you know what's going on, or you could tell that your teachers and their faculty don't care about when, you. Yeah, or believing that, you. That's yeah. real. I worked in a Philadelphia school uh, called Strawberry Mansion. And when I was there, I mean, Strawberry Mansion was wild. So, it was wild, wild. Like, oof. all the time, nonstop. It was, it, they told, how about this? I was, I was a social work intern 
And there was this white woman who used to give me a ride. She was also in my social work school. So she would give me a ride to school because, you know, she would come by. She had a car. I didn't. Shocker. So um, she, her name is Tracy. I would say, Tracy, I just want to let you know, bullets start flying. They don't want witnesses. Don't take this personally. I, I'm out. You should be too. Yeah, facts. Like, I don't think that having me with you is a card. Right. We're both in trouble. Yeah. And they would tell, like, they would have, they would have closed basketball games there. Clo like, no fans. Immediately Just because it was so violent. I'm telling you, no fans, yeah. no no one but the basketball. This is a varsity game, mm. just the fans, no, just coaches and fans. I mean, just coaches and ball players. Anyway, so in that school where there was so little education seemed to be going on, there was a young man who was in one of my groups, uh, you know, a social worker there. He was in one of my groups. And I just come out of the teacher's lounge and they were ripping kids. I mean, stuff that you, I mean, stuff they were saying to kids, I was like, did. Is this because of their own frustration, or they I don't felt know like why. this was the best way? I've to never communicate? spoken about a kid like that. Because you definitely see on the internet these days, you know, uh, the the campus officer put his hands on a little girl, yanked her out of the desk. How about that? You see the there was another video of another a campus woman, officer. Yeah, slap the kid. Oh, you could run it. You could yeah, run yeah, yeah. So I don't know why people talk about people's kids like that. Kids can be aggravating, but they're kids, right? So you just shake it off. Otherwise, don't do it. Right. Right. If it's, if he hurts you like that, then you shouldn't be in this space. Anyway. So this kid um, said to me, I come out of the teacher's lounge, I walked across the hall, I sit down in my family group, and this kid could not read the word stop. He was 14 years old. He could not read the word stop. I know because I was thinking I was so smart. I was like, man, you could read, you could read. Man, come on. I said, you could read this word. And I wrote stop down because who doesn't know the word stop? And he's like, st stop. Wow, that's bad. So this young man said to me in family group, his hand goes up. He says, Mr. Steve, how can they teach us if they don't like us? Mm. Ripped through my soul because I felt like, wow, he he's paying attention just because he can't read. Doesn't well, you mean can. That's innate, like the ability to feel. Right, right. That's something that you're just born. You can feel when. I mean, I have a two year old. She can feel without anybody saying anything that she's done something wrong just by the looks that she's they getting have, in the house. They have instinct. Mm -hmm. They don't have wisdom. They have instinct. Mm -hmm. And when uh, you talked about folks not caring, kids know. Go through every single school. Kids know who's ride or die. They know it. You can't tell them nothing. They know who in there. And it's not about who gives them more or less homework. It's about who they know is real. Who knows the words to the song? Who listened to y'all in the morning, came in? That's not what... It could be a person who doesn't know a hot 97 from a, you know, from a whatever. But they see this woman. She could be the whitest, oldest, most suburban. She's got my back, though. She period. loves right. us. So, so they know that she's, she's about that life. Meanwhile, somebody comes in, they look the part, they're running, you know, they they know the words, they, you know, tat it up, whatever. They seem like they're from that place. And the kid's like, man, please. Fake. Get out of my face. Fake. Kids know what's going on, and we're not listening to them because they're telling us all the time. They say it all the time. Every single teacher I fired, every single one, they came to me not because one of the grown people said, man, <laughs> you got to do something about this, man. This, I'm, I'm hearing stuff next door I shouldn't hear. There was a thin blue line, man. They didn't. T nobody said anything. It was the kids coming up to me saying, "Dr. Perry, you need to vote them off the island, man. This is not right what they're doing." Mm. And it wasn't that they were doing something so egregious necessarily, but when you set the expectation in the school, you tell them, "Look, I love you enough to expect that you're gonna get what my kids get. My sons go to my, one of our schools. I wouldn't do it any other way. I mean, who doesn't eat where they cook? Like, mm -hmm. I mean, that's not cool. Right. So, so it, in this space, brothers like you and sisters like you. You're not often engaged or pulled in because it is inconvenient to have you guys in there mm -hmm. because you have real questions. You want to know, but why can't they read? Right. I mean, they spend all day in school. They can't just be right. broken. I mean, didn't, aren't you certified to teach people how to read? Yeah, that's what I'm here to do. Okay, can you explain to me why then they don't know how to read if you're— Certified, meaning you have an education in this, you've passed certain tests in it, you have certain experience in this. Why can't you teach this child to read? Now, is the climate such that teachers now to keep their jobs? Because we can go back to No Child Left Behind, right? That was a George W. Bush thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and I remember that being a major crossroads in public education um, where it felt like, and I didn't quite understand it at the time, I didn't know where it was yeah. going, but what it felt like was your school would be uh, rewarded or not nah, based on its performance. Right. Was that right. the kind of... Yeah, that's, that's, so, you know, here's what happened. So that held teachers accountable it, everybody, for everybody. performance. Lunch staff, everybody. Everybody. 
So one of the things that happened is Kanye killed George Bush. I mean, he did. His credibility... George Bush don't like black people. Period. That was during mm -hmm. uh, Hurricane Katrina. And, 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 tele, and, so, and so I'm not saying he shouldn't. I'm not saying it wasn't relevant to what he was talking about. But unfortunately, what happened was one of the most important legislative efforts in American history, especially for people of color, has been overlooked and maligned. And the teachers union have jumped all over this because in the beginning, they were for it. They were the ones who were saying, we don't want... Um, a principal just coming in and capriciously, or meaning without thought, just coming in and, and, and evaluating one of our staff. So we want objective standards, okay? We want something that is the same for everybody, meaning I don't want to be judged differently because you don't like me. Okay, cool. We got an objective standard for you. You take a test, you take a test, you take a test. Oh. And then the results started to come in. And the results told the truth. Which it, was? Kids can't read, write, and compute on grade level, especially in urban communities. And and it's by race. In America, race still matters. Mm -hmm. It's not economics. In fact, the argument all along has been, well, it's economics, it's poverty, it's poverty. Well, then why are white kids who are poor beating black kids who are middle and upper middle class if it's, if it's poverty? Because middle class blacks have more money than poor whites. So this, this testing that, that so many people have said is such a problem it's only a problem if you lose your job behind it. You know, look, my wife bought a, a scale not too long ago, and I stood on it, and it had the wrong numbers. I figured it must be broken, because I know how much I weigh, and this thing can't be, it must be lying. Throw this joint out the window. Mm -hmm. When the fact is, the scale said what the scale said. Scale, is not, scale doesn't ask me if it likes my suit. doesn't ask me if it likes my hair. It's just telling me how much I weigh. That's right. And these assessments, is what they refer to them as, are telling the truth. 75% of the students in New York City, it keeps being reported, when they graduate are not college ready. What the hell else are they going to be ready for? If you send them to college track, because some of those A kids that you went to school with yeah. left not college ready. Yeah. So how foolish is that? 75% of this, that's a lot of people's it's kids. A lot. It's a lot. Who sent them to school 187 days, woke them up, fussed with them, made them yeah. wash their behinds, get ready to go to school, sat down with them, made them do homework. All parents are not bad parents. I mean, they, they did what they knew how to do. So what's the, I'm trying to, through this conversation, this dialogue, I'm trying to pinpoint if, if the public school system is not fitting, working for black and brown kids, what needs to change? Needs to be a catastrophic change. The first change is we need to stop looking at, at, looking at it as an employment program for adults and look at it for a career builder for children. The problem is... So, that, and you're saying, and this is, you know, I've always been told this. My father told me this. He was like, look, public school is to train you to be on time and get in line yeah. and memorize things. It doesn't train you to be wise. It doesn't train you to be intellectual on the public school level. Yeah, it can. It, 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 it can, but it, that's just not where well, it was designed. What is, what, is design, what is designed for is an 1890s, early 20th century model, um, post-Reconstruction, um, pre-Industrial Revolution. That's the model. Jeez. It is. You think about it. The school calendar is based upon an agrarian calendar. So that means we get the summers off. Why? Why? so that people could grow. We get out of school at two o'clock, why? Because that's when people were supposed to go home and take care of livestock. Why do we come to school the time we do? Why? Because that was when you're supposed to take care of the, the livestock. The entire schedule is based upon a growing season. Mm. Yet one, less than 1% of Americans make their primary income growing. I know it's really cool to have you know, these community gardens, but that ain't growing nothing but a salad, mm. right? Mm. Let's be honest. Nobody's making a living off of off that. Of that right? Necessarily. So we have a system that's not even designed to, to produce the level of education that's required for our current economy. Unless, of course, you start looking at some of these modern models of education where you have an extended day, an extended year, where you have um, uh, specific learning around technology or math or science. Preparing people for the jobs of tomorrow. Period. Or today. Yeah, but how many people from lower class neighborhoods have none of access these to None of the none. schools in New York none. City are taught, teaching kids how to code, which is a conversation we're going to get into okay, a little bet. bit about technology. Bet. And so, so what happens is we've said essentially that this system is cool enough because the people for whom it was designed, largely white people, they are doing all right. 
So it's believed. The problem is that the people who feel like they're doing, the white children in this country are doing all right, are comparing them to poor black Latino kids. Mm. So cool, you beat us, bully for you. Here's the problem, everybody else beat you. In the world. <laughs> everybody in the world. And all this crap that you've been talking about, about poverty, you should tell South Korea that because they're pretty poor. You should tell Singapore that because they're pretty poor. You should remind China that they're pretty poor. Beijing, all these places that are whooping you because you think- India has a India, poverty issue and they a, kick a our poverty, ass in education. It ain't even close. They're, I mean, we're, they're trying to get toilets. They're trying to get clean water. But put their students in our classes, they're valedictorian. So there are ways to educate even the poorest among us. The problem is in America, white supremacy is set so deep in our, in our being, in our pores, that we, even people of color, can lie to ourselves and give people the impression that we did this to ourselves. All oh, these kids don't want to learn. Their pants are down low. The girls got skirts too short. They come in and they got tattoos and things on their face. Come on, man, stop. They got the, the hair done. That's not what, it's just a style, right? They're going to take some of that stuff out. They're going to put some more stuff in. They go, it's just what it looks like. It's what's going on in their head and what's going on in their heart. You've not engaged them. You've not inspired mm. them. The reason they don't come to school with the truancy issues because they know they ain't learning nothing. And they know you don't like us. They straight up, they literally. You know, people that didn't necessarily call a, call Mike J a revolutionary. And he, Michael Jackson wasn't. But there's some things he said in some of his songs that, that you know, you got to think about. He said... All I want to say is that they don't really care about us. And the kids, that's that's bouncing in, in their soul. And think about it yourself. Would you go to somebody's house you know can't stand you? I mean, at the, it gets to a point when you think, I'm not coming. Why am I coming? You don't even like me. You don't even like me. Depending and, on how much money I'm going to get. Oh, there's that too. <laughs> <laughs> I show up a lot of places to talk, you about, too. talk to a lot of people who don't like me for the for the. But if you didn't have to, to end. you right. would. But, right? Well, and that's part of the conversation, the, the don't have to part, because I think, you know, me... Knowing that, you know, I went to schools where I was one of four or five, maybe 30 black kids once I got to high school it was based on football and sports. So I went to a school that was predominantly white, but all the black kids was athletes and they brought us in to play or whatever. Um, and we had race issues and things like that. You end up, your parents, and luckily I had my father who, you know, him and my mom wasn't together and he had his own issues, but kept me on that focus of, right. listen, you're not here to be liked. Yeah. You're not here even for them to like you. You're here because you need this paperwork so that you can go to the next phase of life. It ain't even about... Right, but here's, the, here's what... But real, that was my but, training. But, but you, you know, know what, what I mean? though? Let me take it one step further, though. Here's the problem. There are parents who are doing that same exact thing, but they're sending them to schools in which the children are simply not being taught. Facts. Okay. My parents, I remember, I remember being in elementary school, and I it was my choice not to go to my neighborhood junior high school because mm -hmm. it was... Uh, it was terrible. Right. I lied and I used my father's zip code to get we into all another do. school. We all do. But my parents, my parents couldn't understand why I was doing this. M mind you, my parents are. I'm like, I came. My parents are immigrants. Sure. Their whole mentality is just go to school and do the best you can. They didn't even process at the time because they're they're too busy trying to learn the language. Yeah. And I know trying a lot of it, and I see it. I see it happening over and over again. But I, I but also my parents also were like. They just trusted the system, and they were like, "Go, go with it." Right. So I had to learn the the hard way. I'm like, "Wait, this isn't right. I definitely don't want to go here because I know if I I do not want to become a product of this school." Right, and and so the problem is, we then would blame the parents when if all they did was just send you to the school that was down the street, you and I wouldn't be talking right now because it would have gone miserably wrong. You would have right. gotten the information. That was being given. You would have gotten, or you would have got discouraged and took another path that that's, wasn't. That's good what I'm saying. Wait, yeah. I mean, and we don't. This is not hyperbole. This is not us just making it up. Or just, or just pushes it. This is what the data is saying. The data is saying that children who go to those schools, that's what their lives look like. And it doesn't mean that they're less intelligent. That's the part that drives me crazy. I, I say to people, poverty doesn't matter. Oh, you, these white liberals get mad, and these, and these whack intellectuals, you know. I, they're black, but they want to be, you know, so this is whack. Mm -hmm. And it is whack nationalists. They get in there and they're just so, you know, you don't understand. You don't understand poverty. I don't understand poverty. Really, I don't. Mm. Please explain it to me. So, and that goes back. And what you're saying is there are the oftentimes placing blame on the financial circumstances for the reason right. acceleration in life can't take it, place. I don't know. So here's what it is. To this day, I don't know how much your parents made. No, do I really care. You told me you went to a school that, that prepared you. We're not talking about how much your parents made or didn't make. That's mm -hmm. inconsequential. 
just because, I don't know what your parents made, but they seem to have done all right. They seem to have done all right. How much a parent makes does not determine how intelligent a child is. And what's so bananas about this, what's just so sickening, is to hear people who are supposed to be, in many cases, black Latino intellectuals, jumping behind this wall of shame that we put on our own people. Like, man, see, y'all broke. They ain't never... And, and we try to mm. pawn it off like we're like we're being revolutionaries. There's nothing revolutionary about telling people that they're stuck. You know what's revolutionary saying? You ain't stuck. You and me, we right. getting out of here. And there's nothing revolutionary about placing blame on the same people that have been oppressing us. If we're not going to take responsibility and, and action for ourselves and figure out how to win. Let's ride out. So we mm. sit down. We huddle. Okay. You see how big they are. They got the same size football we do. Same size field we do. We could either sit here and let them beat the piss out of us for the next two hours, or we could decide it's not going to happen. Let's go. That Everyone makes a decision. Mm -hmm. And what I'm saying is we do have to take control of our community. We do have to take control. And when I say we, I don't just mean people of color because we didn't get in this situation by themselves, and we ain't getting out by themselves. We didn't get here because we did something so horrible, and we're not getting out because we do something so great. We have to find a way to work with people in and out of our community. And we have to stop allowing people to make us think that we are the broken ones. And then stop playing but, these... But you could, you could make the, have the discussion, make the argument, however you want to term it. I can perform as a person of color phenomenally through the education system all the way up to higher education. Mm -hmm. Get out of that scenario and still hit the institutionalized racism no doubt. brick wall of no America doubt. and be very frustrated and go down the wrong path because we do see that happen. No doubt. Well. I mean, it's, it, it, I mean so I can't, we can't act like that. Those things well, I'm not, aren't I'm factual. not acting like it, it doesn't. I'm saying because they do, we have to prepare ourselves. Right. You know it's there. And it's not going anywhere during our lives. It ain't mm -hmm. going anywhere. But here you are, here you are, here I am, I think relatively successful people. In spite of the fact that this has occurred. And each year we are educating children in two states to be those same people. You don't think, I don't think, and you don't think that we're the last of the Mohegans. We're not thinking that we're just so special and kissed on the forehead by God that we're separate from the rest of our people. We're saying, no, 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 I'm Harriet Tubman in this thing. I'm heading back in there. Mm -hmm. I, I know there have to be more of us back there. There have to be more cats that are as intelligent as you, as intelligent as you, and as capable as any one of us. And probably with all due respect to any of us in the room, could light us up. Well, and also I think, too, what I'm hearing from you, and we talk about this on the show a lot, you know, I always find myself speaking on not waiting for this government or any government to come save us. I wrote a book, Man Up, Nobody's Coming to Save Us. Yeah, oh, well, there you go. It, because, yeah, we could want that, but while you And we wait, could point fingers all day. Right. You did this to us, you did this to us, and, and you're it's doing true. this, and it's facts. But guess what? We just going to sit around and wait? Because even when they yeah. owe you, you got to still go take it. Listen, you got to grind out. You know, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm an African-American who started a school in the hood because I believed in my community. And I'm here to tell you that every single person told me it couldn't happen. And most of the people who told me it couldn't happen were us, black people, Latinos. The city had a Latino mayor. Latino and black city council, Latino and black, I think there were one or two white people on the board of education, but there was they were such a minority, they weren't going to raise up on anything, you know what I mean? They were like, whatever y'all say we're cool with, because mm -hmm. they were those liberal ones, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Those people, those were the people who, our people, were the ones saying, man, these kids don't even want to go to college. How could you say that, man? Like, how, how are we even having that conversation? Mm -hmm. The way we got the first school started, true story. And this was Capital Prep. Capital Prep in Hartford. The way we got the first school started was I had to convince everyone it wasn't going to be successful. Damn. Swear to God. I would sit down with- This is just an experiment. Just ride along with me. It probably literally, won't work. I'm not even, I'm not even wow. joking. I literally would say that to people. I say, well, look, I know you're the mayor. Here's the deal. I don't even know what I'm doing. We're probably not even going to be that good. Like, so- if you, all I want to do is open this little school. Like, you got the whole, the rest is yours. I just want to do this little thing. Because in the beginning, I was stupid. I came in, I'm thinking I'm the prodigal son. I'm an African-American. I'm, I'm, I'm from this. I'm, I'm coming back home. I got an Ivy League degree. I don't need to do this. I could go off and make paper, right? I don't want to do that. I want to take my little degrees, and I want to come back, and I want to make a little bit of money, 
grind every day, spend time away from my family and people I care about to be with people I don't like, right? For, to just for the, for the privilege to be with these children mm-hmm. who I love. I had to convince us it's not, it's not going to be. And then when it started to be successful, I would say, no, 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 no. I don't even know why. I don't even know why the, the media's here. So I have no mean. idea. I have no idea. <laughs> you had to downplay. Uh, listen, to the point where when I would be in the principal's meetings, there'd be 50 principals in the city of Hartford, 50 of us in a room. Not one person would come up and be like, that's hot, man. They were jealous. They hate No me. one. We had visitors from all over the world, people from Armenia, the Armenian embassy. If you can find Armenia on a, on a map, I want you to show me because I don't know where it is. China, all over. Like I was big in Chinese media. Don't ask me why. But because of that, I'd have all these visitors to the school. We, because they're not coming to visit me, I'm the lead singer on, in a really good band. I'm like Phil Bailey, right? Mm-hmm. And Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? So you need the whole band. He tried a solo. Didn't work out for him, right? Got to have everybody. Got to have everybody in order to be Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? That's so right. I'm Earth, Wind, and Fire, right? I'm, I'm that guy, right? And selling it as such, people coming in from all over the world. There's a school two blocks from us in which only two kids in the eighth grade could read on grade level. Only two. What, two blocks from us. They never came to visit us. Even to come in and say, y'all suck. We didn't even just win in the classroom. We messed around. We put an English teacher in charge of our forensic science team. Right? I didn't even know they did forensic science so, teams in high school. So, how about this? I only know about it because I worked there. So, mm-hmm. I don't want to give you the impression like, oh, yeah. No, I didn't know. Like, I didn't know either. <laughs> so, the kids call me. True story. Kids call me and they say... Dr. Perry, Dr. Perry, we won because they were competing in Greenwich and all the area. And I, you know, I'm, I'm gonna be real with you. What I said to him, I said, "Oh, that's really nice," because I'm thinking we won the urban class. You know, like we were in the C. We y'all just beat all the black kids, y'all not the beat, rich y'all, kids. Y'all beat. And they said, "No, Dr. Perry, we won the whole thing." I said, "The whole what thing?" They said, <laughs> "We won the state championship." Wow. Because I had said to them, right? I put this crazy thing up. I said, "If y'all win." I'm taking everybody out to dinner. They said, meet us, because you know we the hood, right? Meet us at Red Lobster. Of course you did. Cheddar <laughs> baked biscuits for everybody. <laughs> everybody. Balling out. Biscuits for everybody. <laughs> and it, same thing is true. We, 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 we didn't just win there. We won um, in cross country. Mm. It was funny in the beginning, because our kids would literally get lost in the woods. They'd be out there running in ball sneak, basketball sneakers, running out in J's, right? You, like, you can't run cross country in J's. <laughs> Whatever, we did it. Get out there, we lose. It was funny. We call cross country, you know, in the hood, right? We're running around the block, running around the block, run for us, run. It was real funny. And then people were real patronizing when we would go to these meets. They, oh, you know, one day you guys are gonna be really good. You know how to do that? You're gonna be really good. It's cool that you're here. Yeah, we, oh my God. We, so cool. Can this we, is nice. Know? Then we start smoking people. Then it was like, oh, they recruited them. We recruited cross country athletes. <laughs> really? Because racism is so deep in our pores as a, as a country that when you see black, Latino, and poor people doing something that we don't believe we're supposed to do, even we say they must have cheated. So it continues. Then we won four basketball women, women's basketball state championships, became the 15th team in America at a school that still sent 100% of its black, Latino, and poor graduates on to four-year colleges. Then we won a football state championship. School ain't even 10 years old yet. Mm. Instead of celebrations, I get investigations. Wow. Investigations want to investigate. I mean, investigated everything that you could imagine. So this is, now the school capital prep has been around how long? That, uh, 12 years. 12 years now, and it's 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 the standard now. Yeah. It's, the expectations are high. Kids perform well. The forensic science team is still winning. They don't. They have not won anymore. They, they it was a one and done. <laughs> you caught everybody off guard. It's, it's, not everybody it's, stepped it's, their game. It, it, did, it, did, it didn't happen again. What it, about the basketball? Basketball's well? still nice. Uh, you, you know, you may what know. What about one, cross country? Cross country still doing well. You know, one of our, uh, our one of our players, Andre Drummond. Yes, I know that name. Yeah. Well, he was at Capital Prep. The right. kid that you saw me picking up in the morning yeah. and, uh, on Black in America. Yeah, the one so that was, right. that's him. Oh wow, I didn't know that. That I was him. That he was picking. I was picking him up in the morning because we were working. He would tell you we were working on reading, so I would bring him into school early to work on his reading and math. So he would get into school. I'd go. You know, he'd be. How many students get to go to Capital Prep? Um, the one in Hartford, uh, seven hundred. The the one in um, Bridgeport, it'll ultimately be seven hundred, and the one that. Uh, Puff and I are doing 
here in Harlem, there'll be 700 as well. Um, 700 for all four grades, 9 through well, 12. In, in Hartford, it's 6 to 12. I mean, it's, it's, I'm sorry. It's pre-K to 12. Okay. In Bridgeport, it will be K to 12. In Harlem, it'll be 6 to 12. 6 to 12. And from what I'm told, um, the way you're going to do it in Harlem and with Puff, at first when Puff came to you, he saw your story just like the rest of us. That he came correct. to you and said, I want to do something in Harlem. You said? Uh, good luck with that. And why would you say that? Because I was enjoying what I was doing. I, you know, I didn't... Who goes to social work school, comes back and opens a school in the hood to try and get on television? Like, that's a real long way to do it, right? Right. And so I had no expectation that I would be on TV, do, sending kids to college. I didn't, I didn't think it was anything extraordinary. I just knew it was going to happen. Right. I, I just, you know what I mean? I didn't think anything of it, so... And you knew your own capabilities and your own level of focus and what you had to give. I wasn't concerned about winning. So now, but now you're on TV. Now Soledad O'Brien's coming to you and everybody wants to, around the world, ambassadors are coming to see your blueprint. And now Diddy's at your doorstep. How long did he call you? So, so I'm leaving... <laughs> and crazy. were you hesitant to work with him? Not because it's him. Because I'm going to tell you something in a second. I was at a Kevin Lyle's, his, um, his engagement party. Mm-hmm. Don't ask me how I end up at Kevin Lyle's engagement party. Well, he's motivational and educational, and right, he probably but even, saw something. But in even him. still, the party probably had 15, 20, maybe 30 people there. Jay was one of them. Yeah. Like, why am I at a party with Jay-Z, Gail King, and Oprah Puffy? And Oprah, Puffy. Right. Like, I, and I'm the whole time sitting like, somebody's going to know I'm, like, somebody's going to be like, Man, skit show. Yeah, but you're educating kids, bro. Right, but but I you so tapped I'm, into something that a right. lot of people haven't either had the time and or the focus or those those the hoves and the Oprahs they have the resources, but sometimes you know how you got investigated. Yeah, let them try to go educate some kids and uplift some kids. Talk about investigation. They bringing up all the dirt, bro. I'm gonna go there. So so what happened was I had gotten calls from people like um, Pharrell, who is one of the brightest human beings I've ever met. At one point, I'm having a conversation with him. I said, bro, don't take this the wrong way, but who told you all this? He's, he's super smart. It's, it's bananas. Super smart. So anyway, so, so I'm walking out of the party. Um, Puff grabs, not, you know, but taps my shoulder. Hey, and I say, hey, you know, I'm Steve Perry. He says, I know who you are. And he says, I'm Sean Combs. I said, I know who you are. And um, he says, can I tell you something? The music was loud. He said, can I tell you something? And he put me, I said, sure. And he said, um. I've always wanted to start a school and nobody knows that. And I said, wow, that's really dope, you know? Because I was heading out, it's late. Because like, in New York, y'all apparently don't know that everyone else parties on Friday, Saturday. Not in the entertainment industry. We do it on Tuesday at 1 so, a.m. You know right. I mean? So I'm like, I got to go to work. Like, I have a job. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the other kid not be here. So um, he says, can I, you know, can I holler at you for a second? I said, sure. Like, why am I going to say no to that? So I've always respected his work, loved his music. Um... And uh, so he said, I've, I've always wanted to start a school and, you know, I just, you know, I really respect what you do. I said, I, I really appreciate that, bro. Um, thank you. He said, I think we should, I think, you know, I want to start a school. I said, good luck with that. And he said, okay, I want us to do it together, though. I said, yeah, I, okay. You know, because I'm, I'm being polite, right? Because I, I had a school. I hadn't envisioned myself being on television, so that had already happened, and I was dealing with what that looked like. And be like. honest, did you really think Puff had the focus in the... In the That's in what the, I'm saying. I didn't you know. You felt like he was just talking, maybe had one too many roses. Uh, so, was... so, so, there's a part of me that says yes to that, but it wasn't just because it was him, because at that same time, a lot of people who were in the entertainment industry would come up to me and they would say things like, man, I've always wanted to, and you have to realize that when I'm out, I was just outside, you know, as I'm waiting to get in here, uh, down, in, you know, just down on the, on the street, getting ready to come in. And a young brother's like, man, I've always wanted to start a school. I mean, people just say that to me. And I, I want you to hear this in a way which I feel it. I am so inspired by that. But this is what I really do. This is all I do. It's not just talk. This is all, but, th but I want to make it even clear. This is all I do. Like, this is my game. Someone said to me, so what else do you see yourself doing? No, 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 no. You got to understand. This is my whole thing. I'm not even really good at anything else. And then they say, well, you know. You okay, that may sound like false modesty. Let me say it to you this way. I'm really good at this. So I'm going to ride this. This is my thing. So I don't like to play in it with other people. Like if it's not really what you're, if you're not about this life, then I don't want to do it. And it doesn't mean that it's a knock against you. I don't want to do it no matter Listen, who you are. It's the same way people I am with radio where I people say they want to do radio, but they don't really want to do the work that it takes to be right. in this game. Right. Or people say they really, they want to rap, 
but they don't really want to be. They want to the be. Same thing, they right? want to be mm-hmm. popping. They, so you it, don't want to do the work, and, and that's what it is. And so, I, I just did an interview with a. I interviewed a, a person who wanted to be a chemistry teacher for us last night, and you know, I'm coming home. I'm Facetiming her while I'm driving. I know you're not supposed to do that, but it's, I did, and I'm talking to her, and she's not gonna work for us. I don't feel like she wants it. As, so this is the same level for anybody, no matter who it is that uh, that we're gonna be working. So anyway, so he for the next two years. For the next two years, not in a, I don't want to, please don't think, I'm not saying he was like some sort of page or something like this, star. No, 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 no. He would, he would check in on me. Periodically. He would check in on me. It was consistent. Yeah. 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 He would check in on me, man, hey, how's my school coming? And I, you know, it's coming. It's, it's so coming. Well, what's the first step? I mean, is, is that. Well, for, in, in my first step with working with him, honestly, was to discourage him from doing it. The whole time for the first two years was me saying to him, why don't you do an after school program? Why don't you do, why don't you do a scholarship? Why, I'll help you. Say, I said to him, I don't even, no one has to even know I did it. I'll put this whole thing together for you. I'll write it up because you're important to us. When I did my, one of my first interviews on CNN, I, I brought Puff in, and there are people, there are people in some pretty big magazines, and you know, some, I don't want to do that. You know, some of the people, mm-hmm. why would you do that? Why would you have a brand? You're an educator, you're respected. Why would you do that? Because he sold 400 million records to black Latino poor kids. I want to know what he's talking about. Like, because he gets us. Well, and Puffy cares about young people. He, more than mm-hmm. people ever. One of the things that I feel obligated to, to tell about. And he cares about motivating people to be have, great. Right. So you know him, right? I've known him 20 years. So, so what happens is he's going through over this past six years, he's been through some bumps. At no point does this, because I would call him, I'd say, man, you need me to come out and invite, like, hey, hey, folks, do you know what this guy's been doing for the, and the reason why it isn't done is not him, it's me. Like, the guy who you're saying you, you respect because he does it, I'm the one who's discouraging Sean Combs, the same person that you guys are all, you know, slaying because he doesn't give enough to the community, he doesn't do this, and he's literally saying to me, you know, because late night phone calls, you know, because. One in the morning, he'll call it, you. It, at least. So it's, come on, Doc. What are we doing? And how's this coming? And the most vulnerable and committed, at no point does he use that as, as his out. In fact, the only reason people found out about it when they did, that he was involved in it, was because, true story, because we, we were getting applications and I wanted to get more applications. And, and honestly, I didn't want people to find out about it. I didn't want to be outed that he had been a part of this from the beginning. Because mm, then that would look like he was hiding it. Right, so, so... He came up here and started promoting it. Yeah. And so we talked that week... That week, and said, "This is the last week of applications mm-hmm. for you know students to get into the school." Right. He said, "I can say something now." Yeah, you can say, "Just go do what you, you know." He's like, "I'm." He came over. He had a script. I remember he had a script. Yeah, he was ready. Yeah. He had a script, and he yeah. was like, "All right, one second. Yeah. He pre- he yeah. previewed his script on the show. I think we might have even edited that out of the interview, yeah. just make it look smooth. Sure. But he was like, one second. <laughs> he, he turned to his team like. Because he didn't want to say the wrong yeah. things because of obviously it's a school it's, and you got to be very careful listen, about what you're saying. And He went on Fallon and talked about it. He didn't have to do that. Mm-hmm. I mean, he's got a number of businesses that were, could benefit from being on Fallon where he talks about it. When He called me one night and he said, um, I'm not breaking any confidences. He said, for real, this is after we got approved. For real, do we, do we really have a school? This is after four, almost six years of doing this. I said, we, yeah, we got one. I'm like, oh, who is this? <laughs> wait, 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 yes, yes, we do have a school. He said, tell me, just say it again. Just tell me that we have a school. I said, bro, we got a school. He said, but what does that mean? I said, we are going to be opening a school in Harlem. My Harlem? Like, your Harlem. We going back to Harlem. Yeah, he said, I'm going to be crying. You can imagine some of I'm going to be crying like, you know, I'm, I can't... He said, I'm gonna have snot bubbles coming out of my nose. You don't understand. <laughs> like, we going he said, we gonna part, we gonna celebrate this thing. I'm like, well, he says, searchlights. I'm like, no, not no, searchlights. No, 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 not no, searchlights. No, no, no. Let's this not. This ain't a club. This ain't a club. This but, ain't a club. But the point is that he what he was what he said to me every single time is, man, I'm we gonna make education cool. I wanna be a part of it. I want kids to wanna get A's. I want black kids to wanna be smart. I want them to wanna do well in school. I want them to be proud. I wanna build leaders. I wanna build a nation of leaders. And then he said, I want to talk to these other cats who are in positions like mine, and I want to say, we got the blueprint. Just do it like us. Man, it's funny you say that. Just two days ago, I forget where I was. Must have been Father's Day Saturday. Yeah, I was at a friend of mine's house. It was a bunch of dads and moms and, you know, kids playing in the yard. 
And we was talking about education, yeah. right? Because my daughter is going to start Montessori school. She's Good two. Move. She's going. She already started, you know, what it was. Have you seen daycares. him? Have you seen him? You, seen the Montessori? You, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, we had to, we had to go yeah, in yeah, yeah, and, yeah. you know, do the mm -hmm. whole thing. And you know how you take your kid to the school and a lot of parents think that they're watching your kid. No, 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 no. They're watching you For sure. and how your kid socializes while you're there and what the relationship is so they know whether or That's not real. your kid is able to think by themselves or they, you know what I mean, and just where they are in their learning process. But nonetheless, me and mom was there. My daughter was there and she got accepted to the school. Um, But we were talking about how you know, important early education is, right? And how so many parents still think, oh, no, 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 I'm going to keep my kid at home until they're two, three, four. No, 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 no. Nah. You got to get your kid into these classes. ASAP. And not only just for their routine, but for your routine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You getting accustomed to waking up every day, getting them dressed, walking them, driving them to school yeah. in the early parts of their lives. So that just becomes a part of the habit. All right, but you know, one of the things that I want to but, make sure... But I'm saying all that to say that there were even parents there that were like, yo, you heard about that thing in Harlem that Puffy's doing? I was like, yeah, I heard about it. They were like, why? I was like, no, nah, it's uh, Dr. Perry. He's got schools in Connecticut. He's yeah. the one doing it, and Puffy's involved as well. But why Puffy, though? Like, why Puff? That is the I'm craziest like, because he cares enemy. about education. That's, you know, I, I just don't get us. I really don't get us. I really don't. I, I'm, I've been uh, confused by our community, especially as of late. Because the thing Well, that, we're confused, and that's why you're confused. Well, th there's that, too. But I, I look at it, and I think... There's some things that should be a layup. There's some things that just should be real simple, right? There should be, you you want somebody to come in and do something, and then they do it, and then you malign them for doing it. I've seen cats who are professors writing silly-ass blogs, talking because that's what they do these days, I guess. They've been it, on blogs, yeah. Uh, Trust me, we've seen it. <laughs> what a, Facebook, man, don't lock a Facebook it. post. What, what, <laughs> oh, my. And they're e-gangsters. Like, right. really? Professor such and so? so you're, and talk real soon. <laughs> like, wow, that's awesome. You can type real tough words right. from there. But you're seeing a lot of negative press. No, not a lot. And I want to make that really clear. I'd say, I mean, you know how these things, I mean, we really have like literally over a billion impressions, right? Maybe about three or four clowns get up there and say something. And I just think, it's, maybe I'm like, maybe it's just me. I don't know that I care that I want everyone to love us because I don't care. I get, I don't, I really don't care. But the ones who don't, it's very, very small groups. So I don't want to oversize their role because I, for days and days, all we've gotten is positivity and people all over the country just calling, feeling like we won, right? That's what they're saying. Mm -hmm. We won. We, we are coming together. Yeah. Two black men, each of whom is successful in his own right, deciding to drop the egos at the door in a we are the world moment and say, hey, let's just win, bruh. Mm -hmm. Let's just go out here and do this like it's never been done. Take pride in winning. And what's the win if we win? Kids are smarter. They feel better about themselves. I mean, who? Self-esteem. They, right. They're making oh, profits right. off of it. Are you high? <laughs> like, seriously. Like, put that vapor thing down. Stop. <laughs> it's not okay. Ah. Like, this is, you gotta, it's not okay for you to just talk so recklessly yeah. because people are listening. And there are certain people who don't need to see us do this. And you are feeding some of the most racist, disgusting mm -hmm. stuff. You're feeding it because you're showing that there's a chasm. How about you just be an idiot by yourself and, and save your little 20-person you block? You ain't got nothing nice to say. Don't say nothing. There's that. But it, it's, and it's even bigger than that. Part of my mission, I think one of the reasons why people in this industry have welcomed me, is because I'm saying y'all have a place at the table. Wait, don't let these clowns make you feel like you don't belong here. Like, they somehow are nice. Like, they're so good, and you should lit. They suck, most of them. And because... And when you say they, you mean those in, edu in those the higher who are primarily, education? Those primarily who are, who are actually paid to do this are not doing a good job. We wouldn't be having this conversation if they were. There wouldn't have been an opportunity for me even to start a school. We start schools in places where everybody else has failed. And that may not make people feel good, right? Because we're supposed to give out trophies. Everybody showed up. But I'm not giving you a trophy if you suck. Listen... You may be good at something, it may not be this, and there's nothing wrong with you just manning up and saying, you know, I, I, I thought I was good at it, I went to school with it, I actually wanted to be in radio, nobody put me on, so I'm a teacher. Okay. Well, that happens too, and you know what, I see it a lot, a lot of young people who, you know, chase their dreams or don't even have a plan go, yeah. you know what, I'm going to become a teacher. Listen, so this week, right, because we're hiring, 
that somebody comes in, his brother's like, yeah, you know, I want to give back to the community and all that sort of stuff. So I say to him, so what have you done? I mean, you've been in college. There are plenty of opportunities to volunteer. Like, if this is what's, where your heart is, then you, I'll sit back and let you tell me all things. I worked at Best Buy. Nothing wrong with Best Buy. And I, let me be clear. No, 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 of course. But that's not a training ground. Right, right. To become a teacher at this academy. Not with me. So tell me a story about why this matters to you. Well, you know, I came up the hard way. Okay, you too? I, get, I mean... Kind of a but what you're saying is, is you got to be in this and live this to be a part of what Dr. Perry is doing. This is not a throwaway gig. No, this is not a throwaway paycheck. score. It's nah. not just a paycheck. Nah, you play You got to live this. Yeah, and if, if Damn, you, he just said you're gonna play yourself. Congratulations, you play yourself. <laughs> <laughs> and, and 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 if you get past the gate and we mess around and hire you and you do what it is that you're doing, which is to hurt our kids by not giving them access to a quality education. I will fire you. And then I, I'm not going to be disrespectful. I'm going to treat you like a human. Like, I'm not going to come in and, you know, grab you out of the back of your shirt. That's not what this is about. But we will have conversations. And I'll say to you, man, let's, what else did you want to be when you grew up? But I, I, what I'm hearing is oftentimes when I say things like this, because Laura Styles hears me go on tirades a lot about um, work ethic. Yeah. About the, you know, the pussification of America. Oh, my God. Um, and these me. things. But there is a segment... A large segment, and we'll get into it even with like uh, what is it, um, standardized testing, uh -huh. um, where you know, well, I'll say, listen, guys, you know, um, I have, I hold myself in high regard, and so I hold the people around me in high regard yeah. as well. Um, you can call me whatever you want to call me, but I won't, I won't allow you to bring me down to mediocre levels, right, or just to appease you and make you feel comfortable with your own life, which you know is a hard, hard place to be. Because, well, and that's what I was going to say, yeah. because when I'm hearing you talk, I can see people right now. I fucking elitist, yes. separatist, fuck this guy. Right. He's not for. He's not trying to help I'm people. I'm so cool with that. Right. I, I'm cool with that. Fuck me then. I'm cool. Whatever that means for you, That I'm okay with that. Mm. But here's what I know. When you send your child to a school, who are you going to be looking for? Let me check it for me. Mm -hmm. And people like me. People who are going to give everything for your child who going to work like their life depends on it cuz their life does depend on it I talk to I talk to people let me tell you what one of my interview questions is tell me how you're going to change the world if i see you laugh crack a smile act like i said something really absurd or obtuse <laughs> things end tell me how you're going to change the world I want an answer. There mm -hmm. are answers that I will accept. There are answers that I will not accept. I'm not going to, to get into this. I'm not, I don't have to do that. I used to work in a traditional school system. I had to play nice with the unions. Well, that's not true. I didn't. They're losers. But I had to find a way to, 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 make, work with to make mediocre acceptable enough until I could get rid of mediocrity. I don't have to do that anymore. One of the things that's different about working in the charter world than working in the traditional school world was if somebody does something silly, on a Saturday we can make this thing go away. But in the traditional, it doesn't. I didn't have that as an option. One of the many reasons why you... Because you can't just fire a teacher like that. Oh, God. Come on, man. Are you serious? <laughs> Nah. Well, no, I mean, I know the nah, answer nah, nah, is nah, you nah, can't because nah, there's nah. teachers who have like sexual assault charges and they still showing up and not getting suspended. I can and show this. you a video of a man who was caught. Uh, uh, I can show you a video of a man who was uh, said to have uh, attempted to get people to do blow uh, and cocaine yes. in class. Not in class, no, but but it's on tape. I mean, I can show you the tape. Um, and he's still teaching. I have not heard that he lost his job. I'll give you one that I saw. I'll give you one that I saw. My, in my own, our school, our first school, I walked by a much simpler one. I walked by a classroom. I had a guest. I was so excited that I started my own school, right? So I'm walking by with his brother, and I'm trying to get him to work there. He's one of this, this legend of a basketball coach. And I figured if I can get this brother to come, then everybody's coming to our school. So I got Coach Smith walking with me, walking by. And Coach Smith says, hey, Doc, I think that dude is asleep. No. That's what I said. Oh, no. Mine had more cuss words in it, but I was like, nah. <laughs> so I walk by because I'm really embarrassed, right? Because I'm trying to show him mm -hmm. that, you know, we can do this. And and I got a guy asleep in class with children in class. So I walk by and I'm 
I can't think, right? Because I'm the things I want to do. They're all physical. So um, <laughs> can't do that. Right. That's not good. Yeah. So I'm so I'm thinking those things, and um, so I walk back by. The kids are like, "Yo, you gotta get up to the teacher. You gotta get up." So the dude <laughs> does like this. He 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 rears back, right? So he wakes up. So I say to him from from the doorway, uh, "Meet me in my office after class." That so was he, his last day. One would think. So I um because I worked in the traditional schools at that time. I um I had him downstairs. He comes into my office. He says, "I'm just letting you know right now. I wasn't asleep." I said, who are you going to believe? The person who was awake, watching you sleep, or you? I had to spend the next six months counseling him and coaching him to not sleep in class as they grieved me for harassing him. For to te- My harassment was don't freaking sleep in class. Don't do that. Just don't do that. But he filed a complaint against you against to protect me. himself. Against so that, me. And that way it would complicate so, the firing. So six yeah. months. The school year is only eight months, right? So six months, he's able to carry this thing to the end. He gets transferred to another school. He's still working in the system. Ten. Like nothing but happened. There, I bet there's people watching this right now. They're like, Psh, that's no big deal. My teacher comes in drunk. I smell the alcohol. Yeah. Listen, it's the truth. Yeah. But it's the truth because, because educators are people. And we have all the same issues. All oh, the same issues. There's not a single issue that we don't have, I mean, that you have that we don't have. We have all the same issues. Even more reason why people like you, I feel like, need to, need to be act, to activated in the conversation about what needs to happen in order to improve our schools. You're an end product user on two levels. You're an employer and you're a parent. And because you're both of those, you're probably about as important as anybody mm. to what you want to see in schools. But what happens is anytime we start having these conversations about education, the teachers union jumps up as the the sorority that it is, jumps up and starts saying, you're wrong. You're blaming teachers. And what they try to do is they try to play up the gender side of it. And they try to say, well, you're saying these things because you hate women. And you hate like, whoa, how about I love kids? And And I I want the best. And I want the best. And why do I have to hate anybody because I'm saying that I expect the best. All I'm saying is I want for my kids what you want for your kids. And by my kids, I don't just mean the biological ones that my wife and I have. I mean the ones that are in our community. It's, I'm telling you right now. It's it, deep. It's, it's deep. bad. It's really bad so out here. What's the, is, the, is this a capital? It is a capital prep. It capital is prep also Harlem. a capital prep. Um, the, you're going to partner with the Boys and Girls Club in Harlem. Yeah. Uh, what does that mean? So they're, uh, they were instrumental in helping us get started. Uh, they really are going to help us with the programming, the after-school programming, some day part programming. Just, I mean, this Boys and Girls Club, I mean, doesn't get just open to them. Like, they're just, yeah. they're the Boys and Girls Club. So the way this will work is the school is full right now. This season is, or uh, this coming uh, school semester, or school um, year, yep. year, starts in September. Starts in August, August 29th. Sixth grade. Sixth and seventh grade, yeah. Sixth and seventh grade. So you're starting with sixth and seventh. You'll add another grade every year. Yeah. Uh, and every spring, February, March is when you take new applicants. Yeah. So we had, um, yes, short answer there. We had 1,025 applications. Um, we had almost 700 in one week um, for 160 seats. So this is where it stops getting not fun again. So it's when you have to tell kids they didn't get in. I don't get to right. even tell them, but I know that they're there. And I, the school that we started in Hartford, I'm no longer affiliated with that school because they didn't want us to do... We partnered with the school system and they were not trying to save our kids. We had 2,700 kids on the waiting list. Um, and we were only accepting 50 kids. So the original capital prep... No longer connected. You're no longer connected. What no. about the second the, the capital The second one, we're, yeah, that's us. That's us. And so we're, so you're saying partnering with the public school system in Hartford ended up being so political... So and, poisonous. And I was told straight up, straight up in a Board of Education meeting by a Board of Education member that she would not give me another school in the city... Because it would be too much power for one man. And that was because you had more than 2,000 children that couldn't get into the original capital prep. You went to the school board like, hey, guys, let's do another one in Hartford because this thing is working. I would never have left. Just so we're clear. I would never have opened a school in Harlem. I would have have done everything in Hartford. If they had just played ball 
which for me was I didn't I wasn't asking for any more money. I wasn't asking for any any. Just great, another school. I, for, yeah, I, because I remember one day the, the the day that really broke my heart, and I mean it just this way. I was out doing bus duty, and um, and and you know us in the hood, we, we'll pull up. What what are lines in the street, right? There's just something that somebody painted there, right? So somebody pulled up. I don't know why, you know, he pulled up real fast. And and so he says, yo, Doc, I need to talk to you. Okay. He says, I live right there. Like he could point, he pointed to his apartment. He said, I live right there. I, my child has been on a waiting list for five years. Every year we apply and I don't get in. And his school was that school with the two kids. Yeah, the two a, blocks down from you. There. That was his school. Yeah. So he said... You know what school my kids go to. Why won't you let my kids in the school? I said, bro, I'm not. I want your kids in the school. Like, I mean, if they give me buildings, I'll open as many as as many as y'all want me. So to. So why weren't it? Were his kids' grades not there? Were the testing nah, not there? No, no, it just didn't get them through lottery. So it's all lottery. Period. You apply and boom. Yeah, yeah. So he would put his name in the lottery. There'd be so many kids, his name just wouldn't get pulled. Two thousand seven hundred. You accepting fifty kids, and you only accepting fifty kids in, in two grades. At that time, so I'm accepting 53-year-olds. I mean, 20, uh, maybe about 30, 30, uh, three and four-year-olds and 20 throughout the remaining grades. It, so in some grades, it might be one kid that we're accepting. So if you have five, if, uh, let's say one grade, we might have about 200 kids on the, uh, who apply. You had a one in 200 chance of getting it. I mean, you it's ain't tough. taking no. That's... That's so, nothing. So now the Harlem school's there. It's full. So everybody watching this right now, well, I'm sure we're going to be hearing a lot about it. I'm sure you're going to be under the microscope. You got Puffy involved. He's making videos where they're designing uniforms. Yeah. and It's a, it's a show. Um, but what is it about your program, and we got to wrap this up, that is so great? Is it just self-esteem? Is it just your expectation that these kids will perform? Is it the hands-on uh, nature of yourself as well as your faculty. What is it all that combined? I think it's it all that combined. Above? I think it, you know all of the best schools run exactly the same way. They're literally exactly the same. If I asked you about your school, if it was a good school, you could tell me that the same thing is yours and same thing is is some of the schools. I knew the vice principal. I knew the principal. There I knew the, the coaches. Everybody. Was you involved. could probably say the same thing, right? Uh -huh. Laura, you probably can maybe not. But in any case, well, she you, had a track, B track, C track. Yeah, right, so there was a right, lot so, going on. Right, so there was and a lot going on. And you was in C track, but, so you no, know. I was in A track. <laughs> but I, but I knew the faculty that that you know. Right. Had so to so the so the so the expectations are possible because we have the relationship with our children. It's the same as you see with some of these other schools that have been successful. It's the same exact what thing. What about parental involvement? So parental involvement is something that we talk about, but I don't know that it... I think sometimes it's overplayed, to be really honest with you, because sometimes parental involvement ain't good. Because some of these fools come in, in there yeah, and it's like... It's horrible sometimes. You know, because you know, they come up and sisters got on this halter top and you're like, oh God... Because never the one that you want to see like that. Like, so she comes up, you're like, whoa, that's a lot, You shouldn't man. be wearing that at a school You shouldn't be children. wearing that... At all, ever. So it's just not you're not you're not at your best. Right. You know, on the same token, you find the person who who's an attorney or whatever, and they, you know, all day is about big boying you. You know, I'm an attorney saying, come on, man, can you just stop? Mm -hmm. You know, your son just slap somebody. I don't care who you are. He slaps somebody. And he doesn't make him a horrible person, but you gotta go home today right. and shake it off. Because I just wanna let you know the child who he slapped has some parents too. Right. And they're not attorneys, but they can figure out how to solve a case. Right. So let's just, everybody just take chill a break. Out, chill out. You know, it's so sometimes parental involvement can be problematic because parents, unfortunately, especially this generation of parents, can be a lot. Have you uh, had any conversations with de Blasio now that you're in New York City? Nah. Do you plan on talking to them? I don't have any quarrel with them. No, I, not quarrel, yeah. but just the political nature that New York you know, City can be when it comes to charter schools that's and a crazy education, thing. the Board of Education New York City is its own matrix. Yeah, you're right. And, matrix. and so one of the hardest parts for me about doing some of the stuff that we do, I did it because I wanted to be more involved with children's lives. And and, and the more we open schools, the, the more I'm pulled away from it. And so I find myself at political fundraisers and and doing these things. And I'm mean, it's not what I love. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm there stamping my feet the whole time. Person who made me go, I'm giving them that look the whole time. Like, seriously? 
Like, how much longer do we have to be here? Do you understand all the other cool things? I could be at a middle school basketball game right now. Do you know how much fun it is to and watch? Fundraisers it? and politics ain't your thing. It's just not my thing. It's yeah. not what it's not what I'm good at. And would you open another school in New York? Can't City? wait. We're going to. So it's gonna happen. Oh, it's definitely. How long does this process take? You said four years. That one did because of me. It had nothing to do with anybody. But normally it could take a year or two. Where where would you go? Where would your next school go? I'm really feeling the Bronx. Um, I, you know, I grew up in Connecticut. We used to squeeze to try and get this station. Like when, when, when ninety seven, you yeah, know, we yeah, seven uh, big. We, up there, yeah. Oh my God, you don't even understand. This is before, like when I was coming up. Everything I knew, every D. I mean, we were you know we sit up late at night. Yeah, honestly, somebody you'd have somebody with their arm out the window with with a with an antenna. Sit still, boy. Come on, man. You know we can't. It's just trying to hear because this is when people, you had to get mm -hmm. tapes, right? Somebody had to drive down and get mixtapes and then come back to our community and sell them, right? This, I, I got the Bronx from, from KRS. You know, that was how. So you want to be back out there and so I learned about that. Yeah. I learned about that. And then I get there and I see just this amazing community. It's amazing. I mean, how, how, how do you not fall in love with this place? This, yeah. It's just... This super dope melting pot. It's got this mix of re like off, as urban as urban can be mm -hmm. with this cultural mix too. Oh, that's what it's I'm saying. It's like it's it's, and then the reason why I say the Bronx is because they the parents not the parent but parents from the community reached out to us and said, "We need we, you down. Here. We'll help you start this real talk. We'll help you start a school in Harlem, but we just want to make a point. We will be there for you, ride or die." to get Harlem up and running, but be clear what we expect. And it's the Bronx, so they mean what they said, right? Yeah. So they're like, okay, we're here now. Let's go. Yeah. And we're serious. Dr. Steve Perry's his name, Capital Prep. You're going to be hearing a lot about it. We've heard it from Diddy, and now we're hearing it. Yo, great dialogue. Thank you. And hopefully, you know, if we can help in any way, you need anything from us, we're here, man. I appreciate that. Thank All you right. both.